got a 2014 Mercedes E350. It uh, this this has a couple codes in regards to uh, high idle after warm up, and um, it has a whistling noise after you drive it for like a while. It warms up, and once it reaches normal operating temperature, start whistling. Um, the car is cool. I already diagnosed it, uh, and it does have excessive crankcase uh, vacuum. I want to show you that shortly. And what it is is basically the PCV system. So I'm going to have to replace that centrifuge cover. I have it here. I have that and more. I got all this from Mercedes. I got the intake gaskets, the lower and upper. Uh, I got. Uh, let's see here. Here's that centrifuge cover, the PCV system right here. This is what will be replaced. And I got an air filter and some spark plugs. How to go about diagnosing this if you're not sure where it is. Uh, not sure where it is, but are you sure if it's actually the case? Uh, you can test the vacuum in the oil filter cap here, oil fill cap. What I'm looking for, it, it has a lot of vacuum. When I pull the cap off, it want to hold itself down. It's not supposed to be like that. The pistons move up and down. It's supposed to have pressure in the crankcase, not vacuum. If you have vacuum, there's something wrong, whether it's the intake gasket or the PCV system. Uh, this depends on the manufacturer's design of this engine. I'm going to start it up. I have a little um, vacuum uh, cap here, like a little cap that I just made. I just took a plastic disc, drill a hole in it, put a little nipple on here, and if I need to extract air out of you know whatever will fit this whether it's power steering or or coolant so i'm going to put this on top and i'm just going to use my uh, vacuum pressure gauge with my otc and i'm going to check and see how much vacuum we got and we're going to compare it before and after You can hear air whizzing through a little valve. You can hear it like a shh. You'll hear that. I'm going to pull this. There's an indication there's a lot of vacuum. This is not going to be a perfect seal, but it is definitely going to the vacuum portion here. So anything above this is, um, we got atmospheric pressure at zero, and anything below is in vacuum. Anything over there is pressure per square inch, and we're definitely in vacuum. It needs to be at zero or slightly above zero, but again, because it makes pressure, not vacuum. I got a, I just got the air, uh, air duct off here. I'm just gonna pull some stuff off and show you some things as I go along, and just update the video that way because this is gonna be very lengthy. I need to put all my focus on this vehicle. But again, um, I don't know if I stated, uh, but there's codes that are coming up in regards to high idle during warm up, and I think there's another code uh, re in relation to that also. I, d I can't remember the code, but I'll put them in the uh, video here. So I'm going to get everything torn down. Like I said, I do have a lot of other things that I'm replacing the intake. Um, intake gaskets, spark plugs, air filter, uh, and I got to remove the high pressure fuel pump. So more than likely, I'll just re uh, document that, that coming out. And um, wish me luck, because if the people on the uh, Identifix were saying it's going to be a pain in the ass, then I'm kind of ready for it. All right, so I got some miscellaneous connectors off. Uh, here, like a breather. I'm not sure where this go. I don't know. That's like anything. You gotta be very, very careful with these. Uh, like a map sensor here. Um, I got a bunch of little mis miscellaneous connectors. Uh, and there's a cover here you gotta pull off. It was, uh, I wanna say, a T15. Pull that cover off with those two fasteners. Other ones are just uh, stamped in, they're, they're not real. Then it's a 10 millimeter inverted, and then there's some in the back here. There's two of them in the back, so there's four total. So that's what I'm in the midst of pulling off this uh, silence or intake plenum.
There's a connector right here also that needs to come off. There's another uh, connector in the back. I think that's probably for the um, butterfly valves and the intake here. So this one's off. The other one was keeping the intake down also. I'm going to put a throttle body connector off now. There was a vacuum line in the back I had to get off also. So I should be everything. Oh gosh, all that oil. I can't even begin to tell you how much oil has like fell on the ground. I'm going to show you that later. Uh, I dropped a screw in the back that went here. So there's the two fasteners I was referring to. Uh, I The one on the right fell, well the left driver side fell. I got to find that joker. and it's, I got to change these lower intake gaskets also. So I'm going to pull this whole lower intake off. Uh, it looked like it's just a couple of fasteners. And, um, and I'll work on getting the rest of the stuff out but it uh ugh. golly change some spark plugs too this is a pain ass <laughs> look all convoluted futuristic dang it man so let me get to work and once i find that bolt and hoping that fastener didn't fall somewhere in the engine so that's the main reason why i need to get it all right got the uh, intake off and here's my bolt fell right down there all right so i'm gonna have to remove the high pressure fuel pump to get access to this pcv system and i think that's the fastener right there i mean it said it was one fastener that you can't get off in the uh, case studies but um i'm in the midst of taking off this shield here this cover uh, this this like a little bracket whatever it is and uh, it's just a 10 millimeter inverted bit this is what I'm using I got this little stubby uh, hex from Harbor Freight I got them from a while ago and just in case I need to get in tight spots and uh, to get in the back here I'm using this and the 15 socket uh, ratchet wrench and I'm just trying to inch it over hopefully I can get a visual of that but that one fastener at the bottom down there is very difficult to get to and I'm just going to be another one in the very back that I'm going to have to access to. going to do is going to be like this I mean, it's just it's really tight luckily these fasteners are clean and once you get them loose they should just come out with ease so it might be a good idea to clean everything clean all the holes out before you try putting everything back in place and what I'll do I'll make I'll try to get the hardest one first um, I know I took this one out. This is pretty simplistic. I just got a little, um, got a little happy taking stuff off. But uh, you, you leave the easier ones in place. You can get the more difficult ones out, and you don't have to have any play or any type of obstruction impedance. You know, retrieving those faster in case the bracket want to get cocked or, or whatever. So I got that out. I'm just gonna work my way getting all these other ones out here in the back. Everything I think that needs to come out, out. So this is the bracket, what it looked like in the back. It was four fasteners, I wanna say. Here, here at the bottom. Two here, and then this one. I want to say 
and the other one like had Christmas trees in them um, and here there was some zip ties that I gotta put back I got the high pressure fuel pump pressure released and I've been at getting these fasteners out for the high pressure fuel pump housing and there was uh, four of these 10 millimeter inverted bits I'm hoping that I can just slide it right on out and there wouldn't be any type of trinkets or springs or anything that maybe these engineers probably didn't put into place to prevent us people from working on them so I'm hoping it's just a uh, like a drive gear or something in here I didn't take the high pressure fuel pump completely out I'd imagine the the uh, lifter inside what drives the fuel high pressure fuel pump probably has like a stopping point I guess I, I don't know I'm a I'll see what happened when I pull it out I got the fuel pressure I mean uh, the fuel pump loose just don't have it completely out this is my last fastener in the back here I'm removing it's not it's honestly not that bad of a replacement I mean if you take your time and you have the right stuff I haven't cursed too much See how to get the connector off. I can so I could just slide it and just let it sit back here. Uh, but I do need to see about. Okay, there's an the O-ring in here that needs to. This was probably gonna have to be changed. A big deal. Um, shucks. I believe I flip it up. Okay. And here's the old ring. Alright, if you're curious, this is what it looks like. The housing for the high pressure fuel pump. There's an O-ring here. There's a gasket. It has like an inlet outlet and those two openings down there look like it's what lubricate the yeah, you can see a hole down there those little orifices that's what lubricate the end of the cam and uh, lightly oh there's one and uh, the lifter for the uh, high pressure fuel pump which is good I've seen some that had inefficient or ina inadequate looking systems this looks very well lubricated so the gasket's fine I'm going to reuse this not think twice about it because it does protrude from the surface in which it sits so that's a good thing I'm just gonna clean that off and if I you know had any type of concerns I could put like an anaerobic sealant around the outer edges here just to be on the safe side but I don't I don't think I gotta worry about anything the anaerobic sealant I love that stuff I tell you what here's the uh, lifter Yeah, it's not hydraulic or anything, it's just a roller. Solid roller. Alright, let me um there's the uh, there's our high pressure fuel pump. There's a connector at the bottom right there I haven't pulled out. Let me get that off. It's just like any other VW connector. in
hear both of the covers set side by side and it looked obvious with the old one that the seal is wider i mean it i mean i can i don't i gotta i sure should take my caliber and put it in there but it's like larger than the new one and i guess what happens uh, once the seal wears out it begins to pull air through here and all that oil that accumulated that's there on the floor it can't separate the oil properly and this is what we got is coming that's going to the intake there so um i'm gonna work on getting everything back together i gotta put the plugs in there first and then we'll work on getting all this stuff cleaned up i got a long way to go a long way to go all right see you in a couple hours if you're doing this repair and you got to change the spark plugs also uh, I found an easy way to get these out. Hopefully it's easy. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, this is my first time doing these and this type of spark plug. It has a lip under the spark plug boot here. So I'm pretty sure the manufacturer have a special tool where they latch onto and pull it out. Uh, I use this hanger. That's what I that's what I got. I use this for everything. As far as like four coil boots getting stuck when I have to remove them. Uh, this is my special tool here so I don't have to buy anything. Let me um, release this coil. What I'm going to do, I'm going to hit it with some brake cleaner at the base. And that'll make it a little easier pulling that, pulling this coil out. So, I'll take the end here, make a sharp point, point. we'll put weight on itself, it'll stay pretty sturdy. The bottom, and I'm going to pull up on the coil gently as I pull up. <coughs> oh, shit. Damn it. <laughs> oh, well. Well, I tell you, this light be falling, man. It be falling. And out of all the coils and stuff I've done, this one <laughs> falls now. Uh. This is what the plug boot look like. So you can see the lip on there that you got to pull up on. takes a 12 point 14 millimeter to get this plug out so this is the last oh boy that's the uh, last thing I pretty much have to do now I just got to get the harness straight back over on the uh, passenger side and uh, start getting the intake back on that's pretty much it but if you had to do the spark plugs on the driver side uh, the computer simply just pulls straight up you have um, connectors that you have to remove on the coil just like I did with that one take the coil connector off take the uh, use the E8 pull the two fasteners out and then extract the coil and uh, you got to take the heat shield on the driver side off which is the E10 and uh, once you get those four fasteners out, it'll pull out and you just gotta finagle it and get it all the way out. But this is the pain in the ass side. This is not so bad. Uh, the uh, putting everything back wasn't that bad. It was just pulling everything off since it was my first time. So only thing left, I gotta clean the lower intake, uh, lower intake and get the new gaskets on there and start putting the intake gasket back on. So. I got about an hour left, I want to say, uh, just including cleaning and all the other stuff. And I do got to change the oil, but I want to get it running first, then I'll um, change the oil when I take me a little lunch break.
first start is going to sound like crap and uh, it should start up and run normal assuming I didn't screw anything up so let's see what happens Alright, car been running for about three minutes. I'm gonna do the same vacuum test, same gauge. I will say it does come off easier. So before we was in uh, five inch grams, somewhere around about that. Now we're at zero. Everything's plugged in. This is no magic trick. So it's going to have a little bit of vacuum, but it's not as excessive as it was before. So it's, that fixed our problem. I right, just got back on my test drive. The car is knocked out. It drives fine. There's no more howling, hissing noise, or well, the whistling noise it was making that I did not show because yeah, honestly if I, in hindsight if I would have got the car to make the noise I would have still been working on it right now I'm so glad that I just went ahead and knocked it out but just take my word for it, it make a whistling noise you remove the, uh, the oil cap and it stops your PCV systems fail and I could you could thank that guy on, on Identifix who uh, isolated it because all cars are not created equal even though um, we could have narrowed it down possibly been a PCV system. I don't work on Mercedes like that and I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to figure this shit out if it wasn't for um, Identifix. So if you don't have Identifix and you work for yourself, you get it. I've told other mechanics about it and a mechanic told me about Identifix years ago. Best thing ever. Okay, I can't I can't remember every single thing and I'm not the smartest person in the world, trust me. But um but uh I had some issues getting the oil filter off that's fixed uh, it was I don't have the special tool for it but I use two uh, uh, big pair of channel locks and uh, oil filter wrench and have some surface area and managed to get it turned so that worked out but uh, like I said my first time doing this not that bad I say if you can pull a transmission you can do this don't let you know these Mercedes scare you <clears throat> as far as the codes that was initially there is going to be uh, these were you gotta ignore some of these because when I was diagnosing it, I called some of these codes the alternator malfunction, uh, engine coolant uh, temperature. Yeah, that was me because I disconnect some stuff. But this was the code here. It was the idle speed too high. It was uh, P0507 and the P2279. P2279. Yeah. So the a uh, leak was detected in the air intake system. And uh, idle speed too high when engines warms. Those were the codes originally. That's what uh, what I had when I first got the car. And it had that whistling noise. So <sighs> we now know. Again, it was my first time doing it. I'm over it. I'm done for the day. But uh, if it if it comes back for anything, I'll definitely update. But um, hopefully, we'll it'll come back for some other things. It has a brake light, check brake wear, and somebody did her brakes, and so we may have to do that. Who knows? But I'm going to let this car uh, set uh, overnight because I'm, I'm down for the day. And it's it's 9.27 p.m. So I took a long lunch break. Who cares about my life? This car is fixed. And if anything happens, I'll definitely update. But I don't think it's coming back. Simply because, um, well, coming back for the same issue. Because it's fixed. I diagnosed it. With the help of Identifix. 
<laughs> so I just didn't have any teardown repair procedure. So I kind of had to uh, off the cuff do this on my own. Um, I, I, I figured that shit out. Thank goodness. But other than that, um, hit that link. Subscribe to the channel. Stay informed. Have that reassurance of my work. See you on next one.